it's a story that is uh, solely Chinese. And um, I, if I'm not mistaken, very, quite early, dating, I think, to the Tang Dynasty. Now, I was at a museum and was reading the wall text to a carved figure with uh, a substantial base. And the wall text described that when curators discovered that the base was hollow, they went further and found a portal, a doorway to the base, opened it up, reached in, and found a handwritten account of a paintbrush to which was tied multiple strings or threads, each one held by a member of the community. And that was such a wonderful idea. Now this print does uh, follow the making of this print by, I think, several years, three years perhaps. And it wasn't until Jack and I started to collaborate in greater detail about this exhibition that the opportunity arose to place another print in relation to Powhatan uh, gunboat diplomacy. I chose five hands for some inexplicable reason. And it suddenly struck me that both prints contain representations of writing instruments or drawing instruments. That was a happy coincidence. Also happily, it's a print that addresses an idea that is so much more about shared experience and uh, multiple authorship is more broadly about community activity with great significance. And I think it's a beautiful pairing in both conceptually and formally. The, I do have the brushes that, the brush that uh, was the basis of this. It, it is a brush that was brought to the United States by my father. When he left China, he purchased a number of what we call scholar's equipment, a, a number of pieces of scholar's equipment, including textbooks on calligraphy and uh, a large array of calligraphy brushes such as these. These were brought over by my father. I don't think he ever really used them, but it, he was attached to the idea of taking possession of them and transporting them to Chicago. It's interesting to me that my father felt the need to retain possession of these, this category of cultural goods when he knew that he was leaving China permanently. And uh, I was happy to be able to use a brush that had been valued so much by my father. Now that I think of it, this brush is a digital composite. I think I photoshopped the head of this brush onto this handle, which is this brush, because I wanted the calligraphy to be part of the visual representation. I didn't have a brush that was as um, voluminous as this. So, and it's rare that I do it, so I photoshopped the, uh, that relic. I recall having a lot of, uh, not trouble, but I deliberated for a long period of time about the, the nature of the mark and the configuration that is aside from the schematic line, the calligraphic mark that's slightly textured is uh, something that I gave a lot of thought to. I looked at a lot of Bryce Martin work 
he did, he, he continues to do paintings and prints that are calligraphic. In fact, there's a uh, series of his paintings called uh, Chinese Paintings. And I examined the systematic way that he would use triangulation in some of his major works. And I adapted some of those systems to this configuration that also, I think, has a slight resemblance to a bird. I, as soon as I say that, I'm a little regretful because once you call attention to something, to what it adheres to, you can't free yourself from that association. But I've said it, it's, it's, it's a kind of a bird. I think it's important that I had already had this experience in the making of this triptych when I found that narrative in a museum. And I'm sorry I can't be more precise about which museum I learned this in. It might have been likely it was the Nelson Atkins, but it might, might have also been the Freer. And I'm going to find out. Um, when I read that text and when I looked at that um, religious statue, it was so striking because it was so strikingly antithetical or unlike the, the use of a writing instrument that I had already examined through the making of uh, Powhatan. And it was the contrast to the ideologies, the concepts that uh, made me want to make this print. It is such a great idea that uh, you just I just felt like I had to uh, visualize it. And in, in a sense, in the making of the, the print, the making of the art, based on an idea that I think is so important, I'm, I'm in a sense valorizing, or not just calling attention to the idea that uh, these, this ethic, this you know, social, political, cultural ethic uh, had existed long ago in China. And the coincidence of that differentiation concerning China in both, and also to some extent Japan in this print, was another marvelous coincidence that I realized when in the organization of this show they came together. There's not much more that I can say about the, the use of those writing instruments. One is very restrictive and one is very liberating. There's a constraint and there's a release. But in looking at the relationship between the triptych and the single panel, I, I'm still somewhat struck, having done them some time ago and gone through the whole process of those uh, realizations that were quite forceful. They still, those, the significance of that difference is still resonant when I look at them. But that's also partly formal, right? I mean, look at, look at the way this is just almost kind of plodding in its linearity. It's, it's, it's a very antiquated idea of, let's say, literature. The arc of the story from beginning to end is an empathy with characters. It's, it's, it's not postmodern. <laughs> not, not. This is something else, and yet it's a narrative that comes out of something that happened as long ago as the Tang Dynasty. And it is so postmodern. It still strikes me when I look at it. And I, and I hope that's reflected in the way that the, the work is formalized. You know, this jumble of information. How there's a seeming convolution in this, but but not. It's a very productive kind of ambiguity very contrasted to the rationally laid out endeavor here. And it's true, it, it, I get into the mindset 
of the imagined characters that are the players in something like this. I think it was entirely appropriate to make this in three parts that cohere, but are yet still separable in stages with this very Western, antique procedure of uh, a starting point and a finality. And then what's suggested through the, the last panel is in, this term to, in terms of uh, continuum. But it's a continuum that's still suggested to be linear. Very unlike this. I really do like this combination. And again, it was something that happened in the uh, collaboration between Jack and myself. This is the wonderful thing about doing exhibitions like this. It's, I said to Jack yesterday, it, I concede readily that artists have so much to gain through a, a relationship with others, through professionals who are uh, curators and historians and philosophers and musicians. And I often seek people outside of the art world to have discussion with, to, to bounce ideas off of. When it was time to choose an essayist for the catalog in China for the show in Beijing, I chose a musical composer that lives in Brooklyn. And one of the best books I've read about romantic, romanticism or romanticist painting was written by musical composers, Rosen. Fresh air. <laughs>